President, it is my great privilege to present to you Ms. Sing Cindy Stinger for the degree Doctor of Humane Letters Honoris Causa. One of the hopes of every college, you're supposed to be paying attention over here. <laughs> you, you can hug her later. Just because they were in college together, you know how it is. You know, old friends. You'll find that out 35 years from now, too. That it's okay. That comes first. One of the hopes of every college and university, and I suspect of every parent as well, is that our sons and daughters might discover in their lives the difference between joy and satisfaction. Satisfaction comes from the Latin root satis, which means enough. Most of us in our society are privileged to be satisfied multiple times every day, whether from eating or sleeping, exercising, or our other indulgences. But sooner or later, we've had enough. We're satisfied. But then, these satisfactions have a terminus. And in a few hours, we're hungry again. Soon, we need to rest again, or use a different set of muscles. That which is satisfying is usually directed inwardly toward ourselves, and is lateral in its dimension. Joy, on the other hand, is quite the opposite of satisfaction. It has no end. It is outwardly directed, and it's vertical in its dimension. For most of us, if we're lucky, our vocations are indeed satisfying. They provide us with the means for living. But for others of us, Fortunate enough to make the discovery, we experience the joy of avocation, of pursuing in our vocation a passion that brings special meaning to our lives. Ma'am, you are among those who have been gifted with both. The satisfaction of having practical, worthwhile work to do, and the joy of pursuing and lifting up for others that which is the animating force in your own life, the richness of a life of the mind and of the heart that you discovered here in your own undergraduate years, that you have brought to the lives of America's Olympians for over a quarter of a century. The flame that you took from here is a gift beyond measure, that you have been willing to touch there and now our lives, with your passion for the liberal arts, is a gift that brings us both joy and satisfaction. It is in that spirit of gratitude, as well as acknowledgement, by action of the faculty and the board of trustees of Davis and Elkins College, that I have the high personal and professional privilege of bestowing upon you, Cynthia E. Stinger, the degree Doctor of Liberal Arts, Honoris Causa. Now, her longtime friend Mary Ann can return to her seat. I'll return to mine, and you will receive the commencement address. Yay, class of 81! <laughs> You know, the flame is not as bright unto itself as it is to those it illuminates. So to the sage. And when President Smith mentioned that flame, that Olympic light, that was exactly what I thought about. I am a flame of light, and I hope that I help illuminate all of you in your pursuit of happiness, in your pursuit of excellence, you know, I kind of feel like I just want to 
gold medal and scored the game-winning goal against the Russians. <laughs> I am so excited and so blessed. Thank you, President Smith, for that nice introduction. I am humbled, I am honored, and I am grateful to President Smith and the Board of Trustees for inviting me back to be with you today for this most special occasion and celebration. And while it is true that I have been to over 50 countries and I've lived in the mountains of Colorado since I left the mountains of Elkins 35 years ago, I really feel the most at home when I am here. 2016, Davis and Elkins College graduates, President Smith, trustees, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is my sincere and distinct honor and privilege to be with you today. Thank you for the support and for making a difference in Davis and Elkins College and in the lives of these young people that we recognize today. share a few thoughts with you, I first want to congratulate the Davis and Elkins College Class of 2016 graduates, soon to be alum, the 107th class, Club 107 if you will. It hardly seems possible that I was sitting exactly where you are 35 years ago. I would also like to thank President and Mrs. Smith and the Board of Trustees for their outstanding and sustained dedication and leadership of excellence for Davis and Elkins College. I have to be honest, when President Smith called me and asked me to join you on this great occasion, in this great honor, I have to tell you that I was completely blown away. And after I was speechless for a moment, I accepted I hung up the phone and immediately thought, what in the heck have I gotten myself into? <laughs> Isn't that how it goes? Isn't that how it goes in life? Just say yes, followed quickly by, what have I gotten myself into? That was truly my lions and tigers and bears, oh my, moment. But as I continued to think about what I might say, a number of thoughts came back to me about my time here at D&E and how my foundation for life was really cemented and anchored here at Davis and Elkins College. You see, the people I met, the professors I had, the coaches who guided and channeled my boundless energy, my teammates, my friends, um, it's, it's just incredible, the community of Elkins, Yes, I can truly say that foundation set me on my yellow brick road and has served me well. If I were to tell you I hadn't encountered a few strangers, talking trees, flying monkeys, witches, wizards, or, or those who thought they were wizards along the way, I would be lying. And graduates, if you haven't encountered any of those over the past four years, let me assure you, you soon will. But that foundation has served me well, as I have traveled the globe over the last 35 years with the United States Olympic Committee as an athlete and as an administrator, I am often reminded of that foundation and the lessons that I learned here are always with me. What are those foundational building blocks you might be asking? There are many, but please, thank you, and a smile, or as, I like to say my motto, kind, fair, and true. They have served me well. Kind, fair, and true. Yes, no matter the language differences, no matter the political differences, no matter the currency differences, no matter the cultural differences, and no matter the religious differences and all the prejudice that go with each of them, please, thank you, and a smile have and continue to serve me well. I am motivated by St. Paul's message to Timothy that I heard on this campus as a freshman. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. 2 Timothy 4, 7. 
At baccalaureate last night, I had the great honor to be with you, the graduates, as each of you had the opportunity to recognize, honor, and pay tribute to someone special who has helped you get to where you are today. We have a similar recognition at the United States Olympic Committee where athletes who win a medal have the opportunity to recognize a coach or an individual who has made a big impact on their success and present them with a very special medal known as the Order of Ecos. The Order of Ecos medal was established prior to the 2008 Beijing Olympic Games and inspired by Ecos the first recorded Olympic coach in ancient Greece. He became renowned for his coaching ability after leading two Tarentine <laughs> athletes to gold medals in pentathlon. This opportunity is for athletes to give back to someone that has helped them reach the pinnacle in their sport is certainly a very moving and highlight moment for both the athlete and the coach, just like it was for each of you yesterday. We know that anyone who has achieved something worthwhile has had the help from someone who has believed in them along the way. So, for the next few moments, I would like each of you to think about those that have helped you get to and become who you are today. It might be the same person you recognized yesterday. It might be someone no longer on this earth. So, on this special occasion, let us take a, a moment and honor and recognize those who have cared about and encouraged us along the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count down three, two, one, and I want you, the graduates, to scream the person's name that you are thinking about. I know you guys can do this. <laughs> are you ready? You got this? Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Wow, that was that was pretty good. I, I think you could have done a little bit better, but that's okay. That's the Olympian in me. You can always do better. So with that spirit in mind, some of you may have your job or your next life move all lined up, and some of you may be working on it. But no matter which group you find yourself in, fear not. My first job was with the United States Olympic Committee drug testing program. And while some might laugh, you know what? I was good. I was the best. I became an expert. And before long, people throughout the world wanted to know how we did what we did and began modeling our program after theirs. Isn't that the highest form of respect? when others use your ideas, your models, and your practices? Would you believe that when I took my first job with the United States Olympic Committee, I didn't even know how to answer the phone. I was disconnecting people. I was putting people on hold that shouldn't have been put on hold. And that's a true story, and that was a landline. Yes, it is true. While things might seem a little overwhelming, more questions than answers, you can and you will succeed. I am living proof. And while I can't make any promises or guarantees, I know that the next time you guys visit the cafeteria, it will taste better when you visit campus and your life will continue to be a reflection of the decisions that you make and the company that you keep. Soon each of you will begin a new journey one that most likely will not be marked in four-year increments like your last eight have been. It will truly be a journey of a lifetime. You know, when Dorothy started out on her journey to Oz, she didn't have what she needed to get to the Emerald City on her own. What did she do? She formed a team, and I suggest you do the same. Dorothy drafted a scarecrow, a tin man, and a cowardly lion to help her get to the Emerald City. She knew it would take wisdom, heart, and courage to reach her goal. Wow, who knew, who knew that Dorothy was so smart? So as you begin your journey on your yellow brick road, I suggest you select a team that's going to help you get to where you want to go, to your Emerald City. I call it a reality team. Now, I know many of you have heard or drafted a fantasy football team. 
but having a reality team will contribute more to your life's success than you will ever imagine. And one of the great things about drafting your reality team is that you get to make the rules. Here's a few to consider. Rule number one, you can draft as many members as you like. Rule number two, you can change your team as often as you like. Now for anyone who's played fantasy football, the first two rules sound pretty good, don't they? Rule number three, and above all else, the individuals you select have to care about you and your personal and professional well-being and development. Their role is to help make you better, not tell you what you necessarily want to hear, but to encourage you, inspire you to greater things than you may have thought were not possible on your own. Who you choose to be on your team is up to you. It might be someone with great wisdom that, that you met here at Davis and Elkins. It might be someone with a medical background. It might be someone with legal knowledge. It might be someone with financial insight. It might be someone with a keen business sense. It might be someone that can help you on your spiritual journey. Who knows? It might be someone from each of those fields or countless others. But having others to help you is essential as you begin your journey on your yellow brick road. And since my new journey begins today, since your new journey begins today, I would suggest that you start this process now by getting the names and the contact information of the people sitting around you today. And while they might not be a part of your team, you never know where they might go, what they might do, what they might invent, what business they might develop, or who they might know. But today is a great opportunity to expand your team's universe. Now, as the president, CEO, and general manager of your team, you are in control. Control the controllables. Preparation, attitude, hard work, and communication. And remember, if you aren't measuring it, you're just practicing. Also, don't confuse activity with accomplishment. Leave it better than you found it. And above all, engage. Talk with people. Put the device down. Talk with people. I'm sure many of you have heard the great quote from Emerson that nothing great was ever achieved without enthusiasm. I am a great believer in enthusiasm, positive attitude, and optimistic outlook. I have seen it work in my life over and over again. A positive attitude is like a gift that keeps on giving. In fact, I believe a positive attitude can make up many times over for any lack of talent or skills you might have. Employers want to be around individuals with a positive attitude. There is just no question about it. If you think about it, this is the one major talent that Dorothy brought to the Yellow Brick Road. Even in the face of uncertainty and fear, when others wanted to give up and turn back, who stepped up to encourage them to keep going? Yeah, it was Dorothy. And again, the great thing about positive attitude and energy is that you control it. Viktor Frankl, a well-known Auschwitz Holocaust survivor, once said, all your freedoms can be taken from you. He was stripped bare, beaten, and given up for starvation. But the freedom to choose your response to any such behavior can never be taken away from you. If a Holocaust survivor can say that, I believe we can do the same in any situation we encounter, no matter how challenging, how grim, how dark, or how insurmountable the situation might seem. There will be challenges and there will be valleys, but you control how you choose to deal with them. So as you go around your neighborhoods or around the world, remember, positive rules the moment, positive rules the hour, positive rules the day, positive rules the week, the month, the year, and yeah, positive rules the lifetime. As you begin your journey, I would encourage you to think about how you want to be remembered. While you might be saying, I'm just graduating and you're asking me how I want to be remembered, some of your legacy has been written by what you have done here at DE. 
and some was written before you got to DE. But the largest part remains to be written. We have all heard that it is more blessed to give than receive, and I have to tell you, I kind of like that receiving part pretty well. And I have to be honest that it took me a while to get this one all lined up. But I also have to tell you that there is no greater feeling, no greater sense of satisfaction when you are able to give back to others. It has been said, no exercise is better for the human heart than reaching down to lift up another. As you think about your legacy and how you want to be remembered, you will continue to encounter those who do and those who don't, those who will and those who won't, those who hope and those who mope, those who give and those who don't. I encourage you to be a doer, find the will, spread hope, and stewardly give. I, I also encourage you to give back, or another way of saying it is participate in the process, in your communities, in your cities, in your towns, in your schools, in your churches, and just say yes when called upon. That is how leaders develop, those that say yes. Senators Davis and Elkins, they didn't have to found this college. They didn't get a tax write-off. There were no taxes. They did it because they knew and they believed that it was the right thing to do. And as I thought about this your day, I thought about those that have come before, specifically the founders of this great college, Senator Henry Gassaway Davis and Senator Stephen Benton Elkins, and what they would say if they were speaking to you today. I believe that they would say thank you. Thank you individually, collectively, Thank you for your courage. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your support that brought you here, that kept you here, that helped you endure, persevere, and overcome. I believe they would congratulate you. Congratulate you for the knowledge you have gained, the lessons you have learned, and the friendships you have made. And I believe they would encourage you. Encourage you to be proud, of your accomplishments and of Davis and Elkins College to share your d &E experiences with others, to just say yes when called upon, to be involved in your communities, to stay connected to the Davis and Elkins College community and friends, to participate in the leadership process no matter where your life leads you, lead you and to vote. As I begin my closing remarks, I am reminded that in 1908, a short four years after this great college was founded, a bishop from Pennsylvania, Ethelbert Talbot, was invited to London for the Conference of Bishops. And while he was there, he was invited to preach at St. Paul's Cathedral on Sunday, July 19th, with Olympic athletes and officials in attendance. And it is the words from his sermon that led Baron Pierre de Coubertin, the father of the modern Olympic Games, who was also in attendance to establish the Olympic creed. This is where he penned the creed that we live by in the Olympic movement. The most important thing in the Olympic Games is not to win, but to take, but to take part. Just as the most important thing in life is not the triumph, but the struggle. The essential thing is not to have conquered, but to have fought well. As you embark on your Yawa Brick Road, I hope that you will select a team with wisdom that can help you get to where you go and help you achieve and live your dreams. That you will carry a positive attitude and outlook no matter how challenging the situation might be and that as you go, you find the time, the resources, the courage, and humility of purpose and meaning that comes with giving back. For heaven is not found in the sky, but along the way. As I thought about how I might conclude my remarks today, 
And since I don't have the opportunity to meet each of you individually, I didn't want that to stop me from congratulating each of you in a special way. And as a result, I now feel a bond with the class of 2016, Club 107. And in keeping with my remarks today, I want you to know that I will be donating a special tree to place on campus in your honor. My hope is that each time you return to this campus, you will feel like Dorothy and know that you are home. In closing and in remembrance of Armed Forces Day, I would like to thank and salute all those who have served and those currently serving. I am reminded that faith looks forward. May each of you look forward with faith, knowing that your foundation has been firmly cast here at Davis and Hawkins. And may God continue to bless you and your families and Davis and Elkins College in all the days to come. I am a proud senator. I am proud of each of you. Pro Cristo per stare. Thank you.